A warm welcome to everybody outside there. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski and I welcome you in the name of JFT Brokers. Yeah, today we have, what do we have? The 12th of October 2017, so the year is coming to the autumn uh, right now. Yeah, we have uh, a very interesting topic for today. It's about predictive power of indicators. Let me guide you a little bit what will we what we will do today um, it's not really directly developing a new trading strategy it's the pre-step before really creating a strategy that we ask ourselves do we have a statistical edge in something which should enable which should trigger a trade and uh, therefore it's an interesting question to say hey if we use an indicator and later you will see we use the indicator first um, RSI does an indicator have such a predictive power <clears throat> if that is the case then it's a good trigger a good edge for any strategy based on that indicator and um, let me tell you that you will uh, today you will um, have some surprises because it's not everything right what is written in textbook textbooks uh, but we will do it by our own and then we will see what is the real statistical edge and maybe we need some changes uh, to those practices with those indicators and then we will have indeed such a uh, statistical edge. Um, as always, you know um, that um, you can have all the slides, you can download the slides already right now. The slides I present here, um, you can download those uh, due, um, via the GoToWebinar uh, control panel. And if you have any interest in uh, later shown Excel sheets, uh, just uh, send me an email here to complicate name I know, s.friedrichowski at jftbrokers.com and uh, I will make sure that you get all the sheets and um, the Excel sheets as well. Um, okay, so that already been said. Uh, one other remark: um, all the, um, so the webinars are recorded, and you can find the webinars on the YouTube channel of JFD. And um, how to go there? Just simple: pr uh, press uh, JFD Brokers YouTube in Google, and uh, then you will automatically find the YouTube channel and all the recordings of my webinars, but also all the webinars of my colleagues, uh, which are very interesting as well. And uh, you will see uh, JFD is getting more and more international. So we have um, additional webinars now in French. And uh, the other thing is that we have launched the web page now in the Italian language. So getting more and more international but uh, today is the english day so the, i will proceed in english but and uh, that's the only language i can talk besides uh, german um, but anyhow um, my italian would be uh, enough uh, to to get something to drink or to, uh, to eat but uh, i think that's all i can uh, talk in um, in the italian language but anyhow so let's move forward here um, you know, I have always to show uh, first this uh, slide. It's our risk disclaimer because we are talking here about trading strategies and finally you may uh, trade. Uh, but nevertheless, um, whatever we um, talk here, um, finally all your trades are on your own. And I, I'm sure that you understand that um, quite well. Okay. Um, so what are the topics uh, of today oh there's one <laughs> sentence still in german uh, i forgot to to translate uh, that sentence because i have always the same webinar uh, the day before in german and then i translate my slides uh, to english but uh, there's one sentence left was wird im webinar behandelt uh, means uh, what are the topics of today so um, i apologize for for that uh, i will quickly tell you that the JFD will be present uh, on uh, on a fair, on a trade fair in uh, Frankfurt. I will still 
uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, just uh, maybe even if you have today the English one, uh, you may have the chance to, uh, to come to Frankfurt um, and uh, to get in touch with us. And the next uh, topic will be, because I got a lot of questions um, all over the weeks, how can I get the historical price data in my Excel sheet? Um, you know, we when, when I talk here about trading strategies, uh, it's always the same that uh, they are based on uh, historical price data. And so we do a lot of things in uh, Excel. Uh, but um, yeah, the question is always how to, to get those data in Excel. And I will quickly run through the process here um, in order to, to make sure that everybody uh, can follow me and can do the same steps. Then we will uh, first uh, introduce uh, that indicator RSI um, because that will be our first example um, to, to measure uh, the predictive power of an indicator. And you will see that I have developed a framework that you can do such an analysis of predictive power more or less with every indicator. It's just some changes in the Excel sheet um, and I will show that uh, later because I will come with another example here. Uh, I use later an indicate the other indicator, uh, the EMA, the exponential moving average. And in both cases, uh, with the RSI as well as with the EMA, you, I'm sure that you will see some surprises uh, which you would not have expected the way. Um, people normally talk about those indicators like RSI or um, EMA. Good. Um, so let's move forward here. So um, JFD is on that uh, trade fair in Frankfurt and uh, we have a booth there and maybe you are interested in coming along. It's um, two days. Uh, it's a Friday and the Saturday uh, maybe even um, if you have now the international webinar here, uh, you might uh, have a chance to come there and uh, then we can get in touch personally, um, which would be really great for me. Uh, I will be I will be there uh, the complete two days. I have uh, several speeches directed at the, at the booth and I have a special webinar, um, but there you have to register just uh, that you know how to find it. So you, you go to the web page, um, um, World of Trading, and uh, then it's in German, I know. Uh, you can find myself here uh, as a referent um, at that um, um, event. And um, finally, here I am. So uh, you will see, I have a special webinar here. Uh, which is called uh, um, Human Against Machine, who is a better trader. So um, let's see what I will talk about there. But anyhow, hopefully I can see maybe even one of you guys uh, there, down there in Frankfurt. Uh, so let's see. We need historical price data, that's for sure. Um, and that is a slide I have presented a couple of weeks ago already in a, a previous webinar, which you all find on that uh, JFD YouTube channel. And uh, you see here my main sources for historical prices. Uh, that's Yahoo Finance, um, then a web page which is called Stock, which is a really strange spelling of that uh, word, but it's a Polish uh, website. And uh, that's the one I will do an example to here today. And uh, the, then we have his data and Tukas copy. Um, Tukas copy, there you can find uh, nearly everything um, on an intraday base as well. You, so finally, you have to select the time frame time zone and uh, then you can download uh, M1, M5, uh, H1 and so on and so forth. Uh, you have to register once uh, but it's uh, free and uh, I can tell you that you don't get any spam uh, emails later. So that's uh, the good about that. So but nevertheless we need those historical price data later for example in Excel. And how is that done? Um, let me really go through the 
process because I think then that is the best uh, that you can can follow and that you can do uh, all those steps by your own. So um, I need a symbol. Um, let's go for British pound, uh, Canadian dollar, uh, for example. Um, the reason is I will later use exactly those data. So and then what we can do is we can go here for historical data. And uh, now you see that you can select um, a time frame or a, let's say a, a time period. Uh, let me start uh, at uh, the 2000. Uh, that's uh, fair enough here. But you can see you, you see already that you can go further uh, down the road and then you download the data. And um, yeah, that's all. So now uh, data are downloaded. Um, and let's first have a look of how those data look like, uh, how they really look like. So therefore, I open uh, such a file now here um, in a text editor, and you can see how the data are uh, separated, uh, how the data are structured. You see the date, uh, open, high, low, close. And um, you see, and that's important, we have to know that later, that the so-called field separator um, is a comma and that the numbers are with a, um, with a, with a point as uh, the decimal um, um, separator. So that is an information we need later. Um, and now we have two possibilities. So um, if you have visited already previous webinars of, of mine, then you you know that I normally don't use the Microsoft Excel. I use um, uh, LibreOffice, which is an open source variant of uh, that Excel. And then I have, for me, it's quite simple because I only have to open uh, that with uh, LibreOffice. And um, then if you apply as an import filter exactly what is shown here, um, and especially if you choose the language French, Switzerland, then that's, um, I know for sure, uh, then everything is always right. And, and what I mean with always right is the interpretation of that uh, point and the interpretation of the date that needs to detect special numbers. And uh, therefore, for me, it's always simple. I uh, just press OK and I have the data here within um, um, my Excel, which is the LibreOffice. But I know a lot of people use uh, the standard Microsoft Excel, and um, unfortunately, that one is now in Germany. Yeah? But uh, so what you have to, to do is you go first for data, and um, then you press um, import from text. And uh, if you do that, um, then you will have later a dialogue, um, especially uh, which is right for the interpretation. So we choose the same um, file here, uh, press import, and now we get a uh, dialogue here. And um, even that is in German, but uh, it will look exactly the same in an English one or whatever language you prefer. Um, so we first have to say, um, what kind of field separator do we have? So we go further. And our field separator, as mentioned before, is a comma. Um, so I press comma here, and now you see vertical lines. Uh, that means everything is okay, uh, and we can interpret um, that quite well. Uh, and uh, now we we mark um, um, the the different. Um, I know we go further the road, and the date here is uh, done in a year, months, uh, day. Um, and um, all the others here, uh, we have to uh, select them, uh, advanced, and then we choose the decimal um, separator. And this one in our case is a, a point, and that's all. And now we can import um, the data, and everything is all right. Uh, everything is shown correctly um, because uh, every number is at the right end of a cell. And that means we have imported the data 
absolutely correctly. So that's good. And that's the way you always can do that import process. I got a lot of questions about that uh, via email and uh, therefore um, uh, I uh, did it now here once um, again to show how it really works. So that was all introductionary, more or less. So let me really go into the topic of today. And we, I mentioned uh, that we will start with the indicator RSI. So the first thing we have to know is, um, yeah, what is the definition of that indicator? You might know the indicator from, from um, your MT4 or whatever uh, trade platform you have. Uh, and normally you, you just uh, apply that indicator. But since we want to measure the predictive power of that indicator, we have to, to create um, um, that indicator in Excel as well. And in Excel, there is no, no standard formula for uh, calculating an RSI. So we have to do it by our own. <clears throat> that means we have to look how is the real definition of that indicator. But first of all, it's just a name, Relative Strengths Index. And I will uh, jump to that uh, website here in a minute. Um, and I go even for the German one because the, uh, the, in the English uh, um, Wikipedia uh, article, um, the, the formula is not that well shown. So uh, in that case, I now go for the German one. Normally, always the English one are better. But in this case, it's... Uh, yeah, the German one, anyhow. So the indicator RSI has typically two parameters. And the two parameters are a period, like an EMA uh, or an ATR. Uh, that indicator has a period. That means how far go, do we go back into the history, into the past. And uh, that is just a number like 14 or 20. And uh, that reflects the number of candles we go back into the past. Then there's another uh, parameter, uh, which is uh, a threshold. Um, sometimes it's even you can have a threshold on the upper limit and a threshold on the uh, lower limit. Uh, I will show in, in, uh, in MT4 in a minute. But that is a threshold. I only use two one because I go for a symmetric um, parameter of that threshold. What is the meaning in general of that indicator? Um, in every textbook about trading, um, you will find uh, words like uh, that indicator is illustrating overbought and oversold regions. So when that indicator has high numbers, which is typically the case when the price moves up strongly, then that indicator comes to some extreme values on the upper end, and that region is called overbought. And just the opposite, if that indicator goes extremely to the south, then um, that region is um, named oversold, and the from, from a trading perspective, uh, it's like, okay, if we have high numbers, if we are in that overbought region, then we would simply open a short trade because it's overbought. And on the other hand, uh, on the other side, oversold, then we would open a long trade um, because the price should come back to its normal um, price level. How does it really look like? Let's go to MT4 here and um, open a fresh chart because then it's easier for me uh, to get everything right and don't have any other information in the chart than exactly um, the indicator. So now here we have a chart, a Euro, US dollar. In this case, now it's M. 15 later we will switch to uh, d1 um, but anyhow just to illustrate that indicator um, let me show that indicator here on the chart so and normally the first thing you have is uh, you you have to to enter the rsi period the standard value is uh, 14 
And um, what I mentioned um, being the threshold values are those one here. Um, you can enter numbers like 30 or 70 uh, or any other, and as yeah, any other number. Um, I use those values always uh, symmetric, meaning uh, those both those two numbers should add up to exactly 100. So press OK, and then we have the indicator here, <clears throat> and um, you see we have a blue line, which is um, the RSI value, and we have uh, two horizontal uh, lines, one at 70 and one at 30. Um, if I would have changed those numbers, then we would get other numbers here. And now we can just go through the chart and see um, and, and have a look of the normal standard interpretation of the RSI. And you see now, if I'm here, um, you see down at the RSI, um, we hit that extreme level of uh, 70 here um, at that point. And you see what the price is doing exactly after that? It goes south. That is exactly the standard um, interpretation of an RSI. And you see other examples like, for example, here, um, everything is all right. We have um, hit that extreme level and later price went down uh, to the south. Also here, everything is all right. Uh, extreme level up to the south. So it looks like the indicator is a perfect prediction of what comes next in the future. And we just should apply those rules like when it comes to an ex extreme, we open a long or a short rate um, depending of what extreme we um, we have entered. But now you see it's like always when people use indicators in webinars they just look exactly for the good cases. Let me be a little bit more precise on the first one here on that one. Uh, it's not that good as I quickly went through the chart because we have already hit that extreme level of 70 already here. So we would have opened the, our short trade already at that level. If we simply use or we, if we apply that standard, standard rules of RSI, um, absolutely strict, then we would have opened our short trade already uh, earlier. And uh, yeah, then first uh, the price went up. So not every um, example here in the chart is that good, as I mentioned. Uh, and you see, at least with those uh, levels right now, like 70 and 30, we miss some opportunities like this one here on the downside. So um, long trade here would be perfect. A long trade here would be perfect, but then we would need other thresholds, not 30 um, in this case. So um, we see our task. We have an indicator here in the chart. And now we have simply the question, is that indicator really helping us in entering trades? Yes or no. And you know me now. If I ask such a question, I want to have a mathematical answer and not something like moving around in the chart, looking for the best places or the best situations uh, where that uh, indicator is ex exactly doing what's normally promised. I want to have numbers. I want to have real numbers to say the indicator is good or the indicator is not good. or if the indicator in principle is good, what kind of or what parameters should I apply? Um, is it really uh, the period 14 and the thresholds 70 and on the other side uh, 30? If we still go symmetric, it's only one number we, we have to know here. So what are the right numbers? And is the indicator really doing what um, the indicator has promised to, uh, to do. So that's the question. And that question 
can be answered mathematically. And that's exactly what we want to do and what we want to achieve here. But when it comes to that predictive power of an indicator, um, here we have uh, to ask how can we measure it? Because we want to have numbers which are really telling us uh, in a mathematical way um, the predictive power of that indicator. Before we really go into the mathematical definition of what I mean with uh, predictive power, let's do it just verbally. It's not exact, but it's already a more descriptive way. Just verbally, I would say the measurement is, is my assumption mostly right? So do we really have that statistical edge, uh, which is promised to be there with that indicator? That's a question. Because if we have such an edge, then we can look for a trading strategy following or being based on exactly that indicator. Mathematically, we can do it similar. Whenever we hit our threshold level, we can look into the future. Um, in this case, that is okay. Uh, looking to the future from a given uh, trigger point in order to see, hey, is that indicator telling us the right thing? And what we do there is we simply sum up the percentage price changes after one candle or one day, after two days, four days, eight days, you will later see, I will use exactly those um, powers of two. Um, and we sum up those changes after X days, but we do that summing up, um, I call it here sign corrected. Uh, what does it mean? Um, so for a long trade, it's easy. Uh, if the price later goes upwards, everything is good. Uh, so we have a positive percentage change of the price. And if we sum up those uh, price changes uh, and we get a high number, then we know perfect. But now we have short trades as well, but then we simply multiply our percentage changes uh, with that minus one. And um, I use always a plus one for a long trade and a minus one for a short trade. And if you do it that way, then we get something which is similar to a real um, equity curve. And that's what we want to have. And if we finally find uh, equity lines which go straight to the north, um, for example, after two candles or five candles or ten candles, that's perfect. Then we have the proof of a statistical edge, and then we can use that indicator exactly in that way. Formally, uh, what I do here is trading without stop loss and take profit. and um, that's uh, something I normally not do, you know that, but just for the measurement of a predictive power, it's okay. Um, we can even think about those trades um, being really uh, entered, but um, then it would be trades without stop loss and take profits. But that's another step to come really to, to a trading uh, strategy, rule-based um, and... Um, which we can later maybe uh, code into an expert advisor. So doing exactly what I have uh, written down here is sufficient in order to, to know the quality of any indicator because that concept is not really relying on that RSI. Uh, if we exchange RSI indicator against uh, other indicators, we can do exactly the same steps for any um, indicator. And that's the way how we measure the predictive power of an indicator now. And let me do it directly here in the Excel sheet and uh, let me guide you a little bit through that uh, because then it's um, easier for you to, to, to follow my, my thoughts. And um, what's even more important, um, what I try to to do here is just to, to introduce frameworks you can use by your own and you can later 
um, do your own analysis of that indicator, of other indicators, of other underlyings. Uh, now we have Euro, US dollar based on D1, uh, so daily uh, chart. And um, then you can do things um, exactly the same way, but by your own. And um, I challenge you to do that. Uh, simply don't believe what people are telling. Don't believe what you find in textbooks. Um, you sh should prove it by your own because that's the best thing uh, to come to your own trading strategies. So I know everybody is already looking to the chart here. Um, the chart is indeed uh, the RSI uh, indicator here now with a period eight. Um, and you, in blue, we have the price of um, the Euro US dollar for the last uh, 17 years. But let me first show you how I calculate that RSI uh, value, the RSI indicator because uh, that's a little bit tricky um, in Excel and uh, the reason is simply we want to have a specific period length so a specific number of candles we look to the past and um, that's a little bit tricky in Excel but uh, let me first um, show you um, how I have done the calculation. Oh, I forgot something. Uh, we need the formula. Um, the formula for RSI is uh, quite simple. So here, uh, what we have to do is we have to sum up all the long candles. So that's the upwards candles. Uh, we, we have to sum up those and we have to sum up all the down candles, so uh, so to say the, the short candles, and um, then we build the average by dividing um, through the number of, of candles we have, and then the RSI is simply calculated average up um, divided by the sum of average up and average down. So that's the formula um, in order to, to create that RSI value and you can find those uh, inputs on um, websites about that. So that means within our Excel sheet we have first to find do we have an up candle um, and up means in this case from close to close. So you see I compare uh, in this cell here uh, that value with the previous close value and if that is positive uh, then I simply um, and get the difference here. And I do the same for down candles. Uh, so now it's vice versa here and um, the, the um, difference uh, is created uh, vice versa as well. So that is creating ups and downs and having zeros if it's an up candle on the downside and uh, so forth. And now the tricky part comes and I um, jump down here uh, in order to have a little bit more room and a little bit more space here. Um, and now the, 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 the tricky part in Excel is that we need the average up. So what we normally would code here is we would say average of those eight um, cells. That's what we normally would do. Just average bracket and then marking this one here. But now the problem comes. Later, we want to change um, the RSI period um, from eight to 10, whatever. That would mean we have to really change always the formula here. And that's something um, I don't like. And the trick here is that we have some, we have two additional columns here in front. Um, and that column, um, the, the first one, is simply counting our, our rows. There you see 210, and um, that is a 210 uh, row here. And the, now the, the next cell to the right is simply minus 8 plus 1. So um, that we have here all, um, we know that we have to create the average between the cells 203 and 210. So you see, if I change that one here to 10, 
um, then it changes the numbers here as well. And now the tricky part is that we use that Excel um, command indirect. Uh, that's a tricky one because now we 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 can get exactly. You see, we have the command average, the formula average, and normally the, that is done from to. And you see how that works with that indirect, which is quite tricky, but it works perfect uh, because now we get that average exactly for those number of cells um, we want to have. And that's the way how I calculate the uh, average up and the average down. And finally, I get here um, the RSI indicator. Yeah, and now it's uh, quite simple. We apply those rules we, we know from, from textbook, um, which means, so if we have here a threshold, the threshold here in this case is 75, and if um, we are above that threshold, we would like to know or what would happen to a long trade. And if we are below uh, the other um, threshold, that's in this case 25, so, you know, those two numbers should always add up to 100. Then we want to have um, the developing um, development of a short trade. And you see here in this case, uh, RSI value is uh, 17. That is below the threshold. Therefore, we have a one, a minus one here. And now what I do is I look into the future. If you look, uh, if I, I press this one here, then you can see what I do with the calculation. I go from my current close to the close to one day uh, in the future. And I calculate um, the percentage change and um, I multiply that with that minus one because in this case we have a short trade. And now I do the same for two days or two candles and then for um, four candles and so on and so forth. And uh, what I do here is I do the prediction for four candles, eight candles, um, and up to um, 32 candles. That's not all I have done here in the Excel sheet. I have did a little bit more because I want to have something which is more looking like an equity. And that means I add up those changes after one day, after two days, and so on, simply by, by uh, adding up those um, trading results and what I did as well finally I calculate the maximum drawdown of that equity you will see such an equity in a minute and like always when I talk about trading strategies um, then I calculate that number opti which is um, the maximum drawdown divided by the slope divided by the linearity of that equity and as always uh, the lower that number uh, the better the equity but now let's really jump to equities and you see what it really means measuring the predictive power um, of an indicator um, so let me put that picture exactly that we see everything. Good, now I have it. What does it mean if we look to those graphs? Um, you see, it looks like an equity. Um, it's going north, which is good. Um, you see that we have an equity which is adding up all the one day changes, the two day changes, the four day, eight day, and 16 and uh, 32 days. And if we have something which really goes upwards here, then we can say, yes, the indicator is doing what it, uh, what it should do. And we have a predictive power of that indicator. I know you look in detail to those equity lines and they don't look that pretty good, uh, like, uh, hey, it's a superb trading strategy so that uh, drawdowns would be a little bit too high here, but that's not the topic of today. Today, it's the measurement of a predictive power. And indeed, we find that. 
But now the good thing is we can change here uh, threshold values and you can see how um, the, the equity changes here. I'm do it a little bit uh, smaller than I think we can see better. Good. So um, you can see that I can change the threshold values. I can change uh, the period uh, here. And we get always different equity lines. And now we can try to answer the question. One, do we have a predictive power? Yeah. Since we have um, a positive slope of our equity, that's perfect. Um, but now the question comes, hey, what is the best combination of uh, period and threshold? And what I do for that purpose is I have simply uh, went through a parameter space, trying out uh, different periods, trying out different thresholds. And then I copy always those opti values uh, here into such a table. And I get now a feeling of uh, the more green, the better. And I can see regions of, of um, parameter values of period. Okay, forgot to mention that. That's the EMA period. And uh, the other one is the threshold. And you see, I have simply uh, went through this parameter space from threshold 50, threshold 55, and so on and so forth. And then EMA period just in powers of 2, 2, 4, 8, and so on. And what I can find is, okay, for 874, I have quite well, quite good values. Um, honestly, I have the best values for um, EMA period 16 and um, threshold 90. Uh, so that's the lowest opti I have here within the table, but it's only uh, 10 trades. So... Um, that's uh, not anymore a good statistics. Um, so 8, 74, uh, 75, um, that's a good combination. Let me put that here, 8 and 75. So that's a good um, parameter choice here. Uh, you see slopes positive, um, everything's not that bad. By the way, if I go here for 16, it's even better. Um, but uh, then I, my statistics is not that good. So anymore, let's go back to this one. So what have we achieved? We know now RSI is okay. We can use it in this case on a daily chart. We definitely need other numbers if we go for H1, M5 or whatever time frame. And you can do it here within that Excel sheet as well, but you simply have to to copy other data into that Excel sheet. Um, and we can do that kind of analysis quite well, which is perfect. That's the first step. Now the second. Let's change the underlying. So since we have already downloaded British pound, um, um, Canadian dollar, let's take those data and put them into here. And then, uh, because for whatever reason, um, there are mm, not the same number of data, let me just copy and paste them here. Uh, otherwise, I have a little bit trouble here. And now we can do the same. We can do the same um, and uh, look for the equity. Sorry. So now we have it. Okay. That's our equities. Um, in this case, it looks a little bit strange. Same parameters, 874. And let me uh, try a little bit other numbers, a threshold a little bit more down the road. Maybe RSI period this one, RSI period higher. Um, maybe threshold, uh, I don't know. Let's go, go here for 80. But now we need uh, smaller periods. And what you see quite often here is that the, 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 the uh, numbers went down. Um, maybe let me find maybe a better example. I'm not sure where it is. Um, so now going south again. Um, 
and here, yeah, even everything here goes false. But now, hey, take a look. If those go south, that's a chance. That's not a mistake. It's a chance. And the chance is now we have to reverse the interpretation of the RSI. Where normally we go long when we are above the threshold. Uh, sorry, when we are above the upper threshold, then we go short. Hey, let's go long then. Um, so if we are in that overboard parameter space, then let's go long and not short. I have prepared that a little bit more. Um, and that is um, British pound, Canadian dollar, once again. Now it's called anti. Um, An anti means that I have changed um, the rules. So I, I, whenever I go um, uh, normally long, now I go short and vice versa. And what you can see now is that my equities, of course, now go north. But that's a good story. So we can go north. We can have a predictive power of that indicator. But we need to reverse the standard interpretation of the RSI. If we are in that overbought region, then we buy and not sell. Same vice versa. If we are in that oversold region, now we sell and not buy. That's interesting. Same indicator, just another underlying, and we have to reverse the interpretation of that indicator. That's interesting. I've done the same here, looking for best parameter sets, and uh, you have them already um, on the previous uh, slide here. Um, now, if we go a little bit up here with um, the um, RSI period like 64, um, so the, the the equity lines here become even better. But you see once again, it's not that a good statistics. It, it's still um, a little bit more than 200 trades. It is um, about once a month one trade uh, for that uh, 17 years. But you see. It's rather stepwise what we are doing here. So therefore, um, I go a little bit, um, I think this one here is a better combination. It's not, once again, it's not the best equity curves what we have here, but those help us in order to have a predictive power of our indicator once again. That's why right quite well. But now let's change the, in, uh, the, uh, the indicator. What? If we, for example, go for DAX and we just take an EMA as the new indicator, and um, so we calculate the EMA value uh, and then standard interpretation. If we are above that EMA, then we would go long. If we are below um, the EMA, then um, we go short. And then we can do exactly the same, measuring the predictive power, and we can get equities same way. And here you see, OK, it's not that perfect, uh, but you see we have at least a little bit of a predictive power of uh, that indicator. It's not always uh, that good. If we go for other numbers here, um, picture will change. And if you go for lower numbers, picture once again will change. And you see, okay, it would work until 2010 and then later not. Um, but for those higher numbers, um, then more or less it works. Doing the same analysis, now it's a little bit easier because we have only one parameter, namely the EMA period. So I can plot it directly here. And you can see if we have high values for EMA, then we find some good predictive power for, uh, you see that um, drop here in, in those curves. And we have something like a plateau 
uh, here in that region. So therefore, all right, we can use the EMA for DAX. But now let's change once again underline. Let's go for S&P 500. Same story. If you go for um, long EMA periods like 211 or 250, um, then we can conclude predictive power works. Not that bad, not that perfect, but in, we can state that we have a predictive power uh, by using the EMA if we go for higher values. Let's go for low values, 50. Okay, doesn't look that good. Let's go for half of that, 24. It's even getting worse. Let's go for 10. Now it's getting, I would say, more and more interesting. Why do I say it's getting more and more interesting? Look, for example, to the blue line. It's only a one-day trade or a one-day move uh, we accumulate, we, we sum up here. And that line goes more or less straight south. Hey, that's good. We have to reverse our interpretation once again here. So um, let's do exactly the opposite. If we are above the EMA, we open a short trade. And if we are below an EMA, then we enter a long trade. So once again, we reverse that interpretation. And I have done this, um, of course, here, here. And you see now we call it once again anti because I have changed the, the entry logic. Um, so whenever we are, um, let's go for example here, um, close value is below EMA and we go long. And that's the way we go here. And now we have not that bad equity lines here. We don't can go that um, much in the future. You see that um, if we add up those 32 days changes and 16 days changes, they don't look that good. But smaller ones, they are more or less straight and they are even better straight um, than the normal interpretation of the EMA with high EMA periods. I did the same job here, meaning looking around for a plateau and indeed I find it. Um, and uh, low values for EMA are quite well here. And we get those nice plateaus here um, in, in this uh, lower end region. So we have to go for small EMAs. We can even change them uh, a little bit, uh, but it uh, would not ch change um, the story here. And you see now, okay, we have measured the predictive power of an EMA and we found another surprise. You will always find underlyings, which more or less should be traded reverse than the normal interpretation. Okay, you might say, um, EMA period of four is really a small one. Yes, it is. But the good thing is, using that EMA period four is now helping us to have a predictive power. That means we have a statistical edge, and that means we can base a strategy on that indicator, EMA, if we go for low values of EMA periods. If you have followed... Um, previous webinars, you might remember that we have had a strategy which is called a mean reversion. And more or less, when we develop that strategy, we have exactly used that input with what we see here. Because the mean reversion strategy is more or less exactly doing the same as that opposite. When we are above, then go south, and then go short. And if you are below the EMA, and below enough. In this case, we have had the strategy uh, with a minimum minimum distance from that EMA, then we go long. And that's exactly a follow-up of the predictive power of our EMA, small value EMA, and then we have to use it reverse. And that is quite interesting. So what do we have here? We have a framework 
of how to measure the predictive power of an indicator. And we can change underlines, we can change um, timeframes, just um, put some other data here and um, you, everything is all right. So that's perfect and that helps us to develop any trading strategy um, if we use exactly that kind of information. That brings me already to the end of um, this uh, today webinar. So we know how to measure and we know that the RSI as well as the EMA is a good indicator uh, to be used. But we see that we have underlyings and parameter regions where we have to use those indica indicators exactly reverse. The good thing is that we, with our framework, we can derive those regions. We can derive what indicator should be traded how with what, for example, period threshold values. And then we know those numbers and they can even already help us for discretionary trading. But we can base um, real trading strategies on those indicators as well. But that is a topic of one of those next uh, webinars. And there are surprises. And the surprises that reverse behavior. Um, I imagine that you are surprised as well. Um, I have been surprised when I did that kind of analysis. But it helps me to use those indicators proper and um, really to get a statistical edge out of uh, such an indicator. As always, if you want to have uh, the sheets, uh, slides, uh, whatever, uh, just send me an email. Send an email to s.friedrichowski at jftbrokers.com and I will make sure that you get all the slides. Um, yeah, and if you have interest in that LibreOffice files uh, instead of uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, no problem. Just mention uh, that in the email as well. Yeah, that's for today. I hope you enjoy the webinar. Uh, there will be another one in two weeks, which is once again totally different because we do a, a strategy review. It's now half a year that we do um, the development of trading strategies here within the webinars. So it's time to have a review how the strategies are running, which one is good, which one is bad, and uh, see actual results in uh, real accounts. But that is in two weeks from now. So have a good um, evening and enjoy your time. Bye-bye.